Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return for round 9 of our F1 Manager 22 McLaren Road to Glory career mode. Yes, we're day we're back here at the circuit. Gio Villeneuve delivered one of the spiciest races, if you remember, back in the Ferrari series. So hopefully we're going to see similar luck today. But if you missed out on the Azerbaijan Grand Prix uh, that went live last week, I would highly, highly recommend going back and checking out. I am planning on ramping up the F1 Manager. I'm waiting for us just to finish off the F1, uh, the F2 career mode, and then we're going to go a bit bigger in on the F1 Manager series, of course, as we build up towards F1 Manager 2023. But yeah, as though we head towards this weekend, of course, you know, at the moment we're still trying to bring out a lot of upgrades. We've got some facility upgrades sorted before we get into this weekend. We've got more of the underfloors as well on the car, but I don't really think we're going to be able to do a lot more before we head in towards the Canadian GP, of course. Are there any more facilities? that we can try to do. We could upgrade the scouting department, but I don't think that's all too important at the moment. We could, though, however, upgrade the team hub. So that will continue to improve the morale and our weekly experience gain. So I think that's quite an easy one to try and make some investments on. Uh, car development facilities as well. Of course, we've got a lot going on as we head in towards this weekend. But 12 million on a new wind tunnel is going to leave us pretty close to skint. But like I said, you know, we've got quite a bit of money coming in at the moment. We've even got some driver perks as well uh, to use on Oscar Piastri and Lando Norris. Though again, you know, Oscar would definitely have to try and improve his smoothness as we head through this year. And you know, Lando was such a fantastic all-rounder, but his defending is still certainly his weak point. But yeah, the time we're recording... We're we'll getting incredibly, incredibly close as well to 100,000 subscribers. We're just about to hit 97k. 3,000 to go before our big, big goal of 100k. So, yeah, if you're not already, please do click that big red button down below. Let's get into it, though. Canadian GP time. Fingers crossed we'll get those upgrades sorted and we'll have some more parts on the car. Formula One is back in Montreal. Let's hope it's not going to be Groundhog Day. The local rodents have disrupted more than one race day here in the past. The Canadian Grand Prix is ready to kick off, and the only drama on the tracks we want to see is the best drivers in the world battling it out for a place on that podium. Gilles Villeneuve is a quick, free-flowing circuit in parts with a stop-start aspect thrown in for good measure around the chicanes and hairpin bends. Medium speed downforce will play a large part in avoiding the wall of champions and ensuring success at this iconic track. We're about halfway through the season now and there's still plenty of time for everything to change. All eyes are on the teams and how they tackle the rest of the year. So without further ado, let's get started. Right, well, here we are then. Canadian GP weekend. It looks like it's going to be a very, very soggy Friday, but the rest of the weekend is meant to be quite dry there. So, yeah, trying to get a setup that's ready for race spec might be a little bit more difficult than we'd like to hope for. But, yeah, well, like I said, as always, we'll, we'll make some tweaks. We'll see what works, and hopefully we'll be able to try and get some optimal scores. Right, well, the first big check then of the weekend. Oh, it's going to rain really early on into free practice that's not what you want to see and then it's meant to dry out again so there might be a lot of very invaluable data from this session there you can see the track's not meant to get horrendous um but yeah it's certainly going to ramp up quite quickly so we'll probably have to bring both cars in on some intermediates there in about 10 minutes time at maximum i've also just realized as well we should have been smart and put both cars on one of the old power unit components um, there we go, already we're four minutes in, and there's already light rain predicted on the radar, but we're only half a second away from Lewis Hamilton. It's not going to stay like that. Also just notice 42.7 degrees track temperature here in Montreal. That seems incredibly high. It honestly reminds me of, I think it was back in the 2008 GP, um, when this circuit, you know, completely just ripped up during the weekend there, especially down at this hairpin and then of course wasn't on the calendar in 2009 i feel like the brawn i don't know what it is but that brawn bgp going around canada would have been absolute vibes so and there the we go it's happened pretty much immediately right we'll bring both cars into the pit lane then just to make sure that we get them 
onto those intermediate tires because it has not taken long uh, before... Oh, we've already done that, but okay. Uh, yeah, it's not going to take long before that rain is pretty dangerous on dry tires. There we go then. Our cars are going to be the first ones back out onto the circuit as well, despite the soggy conditions. Get your welly boots on, lads. It's probably going to be quite wet for a big part of the session, you know, as the water does struggle to shift around this venue. But it is meant to drop off when we get about halfway through. Oh, hey, oh, hey, that's a bit scary. Oscar Piastri then. Suddenly we just get an onboard shot of him firing himself into turn one. Track does look very dry, uh, but there is still quite a bit of standing water out on the venue. But yellow flags out in sector one. Piastri, though, quicker than Lando Norris. Well, Lando Norris then pretty happy with the car there. What we're going to do is just leave him out for a couple more laps until the dry period arrives. I mean, the track temperature is still 40 degrees despite all this rain. Uh, it's all a little bit over the shop at the moment, but yeah, it's meant to dry out pretty soon. Well, apparently then the weather's going to be all over the show because it was meant to start drying up now, and it's got even worse there. We're up to 3.6 mil of water on the circuit, so it seems very, very weird, everything that's going on, and it's not really allowing us to get much valuable data either. We might call Lando Norris in then. Uh, Oscar Piastri as well seems quite happy with the build underneath him. And we'll send them back out on these tyres just with some subtle tweaks. There we go. Lando Norris pretty happy across the board. Just going to make some slight tweaks there so he's got actually a front wing uh, on the car. And yeah, well, we'll just try and fine tune things. Get it exactly to his liking. There we go as well. Oscar Piastri a very, very similar story for our second driver there so just going to try and change around a few bits and pieces on his car bring the cornering down quite a lot uh straight line speed apparently he's quite lacking in uh, so i'm going to try and just make subtle tweaks everywhere that's looking pretty good I, we are definitely getting that on f1 manager you know we're learning more and more about this game as track now has changed to wet so we're definitely in the pits getting the setup sorted at the perfect time well, yeah, I'm not a betting man, but if I was, I think the track's going to stay pretty damp throughout the rest of the session. The standing water is slowly shifting, but there's going to be at most 10 minutes left by the time it's back to dry conditions. But we're getting good laps in. We're getting a lot of good data as well. Definitely, yeah, like I said, I feel like things are clicking more and more on this game. Well, I'm basically just a wizard. It would appear on F1 Manager. They're just over 10 minutes left on the clock. The dries are now the times to be on once again. It is only... I think, yeah, Albon and Lando Norris out onto the circuit. Weirdly enough, though, still seeing no third drivers being used up and down the grid. Of course, technically, if this was real Formula 1, we wouldn't have to use a third driver this year because Oscar Piastri is a rookie. But, yeah, I mean, we, we might send Stoffel out later on in the year. I mean, he's at Aston Martin in 2023, so it doesn't make much difference. But could, could be cool, I suppose. I'll take that. Lando Norris seemingly pretty happy with the car then. Pretty good is very, very good uh, by Lando Norris standards there. But four minutes left of the session. Hamilton's still fast, of course. We haven't seen any movement um, since everyone came back out onto the track. Uh, but the standing water is completely gone. So we might see a couple of fast times towards the end as Carlos Sainz there. Stuck behind, for whatever reason, the Williams are battling each other. Right, we'll call in both cars then. Just as qualifying is about to come to an end, Oscar Piastri... Very, very happy there. Optimal oversteer, two greats and two goods. We can't moan about that. Um, Lando Norris, I think, is pretty much on the same wavelength as well. Um, yeah, I mean, there's 34 seconds left, so we may as well box. Let's quickly have a look at what Lando's looking like then as he heads back down into the pit lane. Timed that pretty much to perfection then with the second car as the chequered flag does emerge. A few other drivers going quickest there. Verstappen suddenly dunks half a second on everyone. Apparently, I can't look at Lando Norris's car, but let's get into qualifying then, I suppose. Welcome back to what is proving to be an exciting weekend of Formula One action, with practice having finished and qualifying set to follow. There are no more chances to practice this weekend. It gets serious from now on in, as our teams prepare to record their best lap times ahead of tomorrow's race. One good lap isn't enough to guarantee a strong position with consistency absolutely essential for those looking to succeed. So here we are, ready to resume. Well, a bit like in the Ferrari career mode then, of course, when we only really focused on Q3. I'm hoping with the McLaren series that we can just kind of phase through Q1 there because it is pretty much the same five victims uh, each and every week. So... 
yeah, we'll, we'll have a look. I'll, I'll obviously I'll run through do everything I'm meant to, but hopefully Q1 now should kind of just be a given. Well, I think really this point of the series, of course, you know, we've, we've got, have still got that pretty fresh power unit in the car from last weekend. It's just making sure that we don't get held up in Q1 there, because we've certainly got a car and two drivers that are capable of making it straight into Q2. Oscar Piastri then should have free reign. Only one car in front of him on the circuit there, way into, well, basically now Sector 2. Lando Norris might have a bit of traffic on his path. There is everyone trying to get out of the way. One of the Alfa Romeos finishing off a run, and Lando's going to take a fair old chunk of curb there. He's let, I think that was Valtteri Bottas through. Is he going to be able to get straight back past him? The Bottas peels out of the way. Beautiful. Beautiful team. It was Zhou Guan Yu, but fair play. They work together there quite nicely. Well, as long as Oscar Piastri doesn't get held up behind this Alpine starting their lap, it has been cut quite finely towards the end here in FP... Uh, sorry, in Q1 even, sorry, I should say. But Oscar Piastri up over the line then. He's going to go P2 there. Half a second quicker than Sebastian Vettel. It is only really the backmarkers uh, that have done their runs up to now. But let's just compare Lando Norris's pace then. Uh, tenth of a second up in Sector 1. Identical times in Sector 2. Will Lando Norris go quicker than his teammate? He has often been the better of the two this year. And Lando Norris again then puts just a tenth over Oscar Piastri this session. Oscar is getting there, but that should be us into Q2. And boom, there we go. Just like that, straight out of Q1, nice and easily there. Lando Norris, P11, Oscar Piastri, P14. Q2 might still be quite difficult, although it does look like the track improved later on there. The likes of Sonoda and Ocon were... You know, actually, yeah, to be fair, Oscar Piastri did just sneak by there into Q2. But Mick Schumacher, one of his... I think that's just his second or third Q2 appearance of the year, has definitely on a march forward as well. It does just seem like, you know, Haas, McLaren uh, and Alfa Romeo and obviously Alpine were all getting closer to the top runners. But, you know, Aston Martin and Williams, they're not far away either. It's just a shame both Canadian drivers out in Q1. Heading out then into Q2, I've got a bit of a strategy up my sleeve ready for this session. What I'm going to do, both cars are going to do one run on the old set of tyres. Then we're going to send them both out on the new set right towards the end of qualifying. It just means that if they do make it through into Q3, then we've got a couple of sets of tyres that we can use to give them the best shot up the order. But I'm just not quite convinced still that we've got enough to get through. You know, this is a track that suits Alpine. It's a track that suits Alfa Romeo. Pierre Gasly is just constantly doing bits in that Alfa Tauri there. I mean, he's up between the Mercs after Q1. He's, he's just a beast. Perhaps we need to look towards him ready for Season 2. We've had someone bin it as we come towards the end, though, of our run. Can't see anything on the circuit there as Lando... Oh, sorry, Oscar Piastri even goes four tenths off Lewis Hamilton. Zhou Guan Yu's stacked it down at Turn 1. Well, has he just ran wide, I'm guessing? He's starting his lap by the looks of it in the number 24 car. Does he just lock up? Yes, he does, and then they kind of... Oh, he did it the wall. Uh, the crash physics there are questionable, I think, to say the least. As Lando Norris... Purple in Sector 3, quicker than Hamilton. Only three tenths away as well from the Merc, who I don't think got a good lap in. Not bad first times on the board. Right, well, our cars then are going to be the last ones heading out in for their final runs here of Q2. But Lando Norris currently still sat in 10th place. Oscar Piastri less than a tenth away. And, you know, the likes of Gasly Bottas, we might be able to get a bit closer to them. Alonso, just like he did in the real weekend here is looking absolutely phenomenal as well. But Esteban Ocon, surprisingly struggling. And I guess the other real question is what sort of pace can Zhou Guan Yu do when he gets a clean lap on the board then? We'll ride with Oscar Piastri this weekend. We don't often give him the spotlight towards the end of Q2. It's often the focus on will Lando Norris make it through. But he's been very, very competitive with his teammates so far this weekend. So you know what? He deserves a bit more screen time there as he winds his way through this first sector. Spots the 50 metre board on the outside. You want to break at about 60, 65 metres in towards that second chicane there, of course, flinging the car as close as you dare to the walls around this circuit, Gio Villeneuve. It's fast, it's high speed, but the chicanes are always there to catch you out. It's why the drivers make so many mistakes around this venue. Slow corners, but low downforce certainly makes it a tricky challenge there. Charles Leclerc stays P2 there, just 12 thousandths of a second behind Max Verstappen, but the Dutchman improves, puts himself half-tenth clear 
of both Ferrari cars there. Perez, seven tenths away from his teammate, down behind both Mercedes, but as he crosses the line, will he go quicker than them? Yes, he will. Only a tenth away now. As we wind our way down into the final couple of corners, Magnussen fails to improve there. Lando Norris is still sat in P10. Schumacher can't improve. Zhou Guan Yu can't improve either. Up towards the line then, Oscar Piastri, he's not improving at this time of the session. Across the line, Oscar Piastri stays in P12 there, so disappointing at the end of qualifying for our number two, but Lando Norris up to the line, will he go any quicker? A 13-3 puts, he does improve, it puts him a little bit safer, but he is once again into Q3, it is constantly those big three teams, one Alpine, one Alpha Tauri, one Alpha Romeo, and our McLaren car there, so luckily now, Lando Norris has got two sets ready for Q3, I'm fortunate for Oscar Piastri. I felt like he definitely had the pace to improve right at the end of the session or at least go quicker than Kevin Magnussen. But let's get into it then. Lando Norris has got two runs to make it count. Well, I'm really hoping then Lando Norris, he shouldn't get held up in any traffic on this first Q3 run. Like I said, he's got two fresh sets of the soft compound tyres to use on these final laps around the circuit. Gio Villeneuve, it's often been a good track for McLaren as well in recent years. Can Lando Norris go any higher than P10, of course? Still our best qualifying session of the year uh, remains in Albert Park, Australia. I think we were fifth and sixth, I want to say, on the grid that weekend. But, yeah, I'm not convinced we're going to quite be that high up the rostrum unless it absolutely starts bucketing it down right now. And that will probably leave Gasly on pole, which would be quite a story. Lando Norris then weaves his way through the final chicane. It's been a pretty clean, tidy lap so far from the young Brit up towards the start finish line. How far away from Gasly is he going to be? It's P2. It's only a tenth back, though, behind Pierre. There is definitely still, if he gets this to perfection, Lando Norris could still try and upset the order. Well, as always then, I always try and make sure that we save the best till last here in qualifying. And that, of course, will mean Lando Norris is going to be the last car onto a run. Rather interestingly, Max Verstappen has actually led the way back out onto the circuit. But less than a second away from the Dutchman. But just two tenths covering Bottas down to ourselves there. George Russell is likely to improve as well a little bit further back. But let's just see then what can Lando Norris do. One final attacking lap of the circuit Gio Vilna there as he winds his way through the first couple of corners. I want to see green throughout all those sectors. Ideally, I'd love to see purple, but, you know, we've got to try and limit expectations as well there as he winds his way through the first sector. There, I always find that second chicane the most difficult of any on this circuit. Fails to improve in sector one. 21 nine. I don't really know how that compares relative to other times he's done so far this session. I won't lie to you guys there. As Max Verstappen up over the line, he will stay in P4 behind Sergio Perez there. So that's very, very interesting. Red Bull drew first blood earlier on in qualifying, but Ferrari seem to be the ones that pulled their finger out. Lando Norris, will he be up at the end of sector two? No, he won't. Lando Norris doesn't look like he's going to improve at the moment there, I guess the real question is what time will George Russell do? He's the car just in front of us and it looks like he hasn't made a mistake just yet. So he's likely to go up the order there as no one is improving their times towards the end of qualifying. Carlos Sainz does though. The smooth operator himself goes up into pole position here for the Canadian Grand Prix. Alonso improves three thousandths of a second behind Valtteri Bottas there. But up over the start finish line, Russell goes sixth. Will Bottas improve? Sorry, Lando Norris. No, he won't. It's P10 in the end then on the grid for the Canadian Grand Prix. That hurts a little bit. And there we go then, having a look at our final qualifying results there. Carlos Sainz still set the fastest lap of the weekend all the way back in uh, Q1 there. But we do remain P10, pretty consistent across the board for Lando Norris there. Gasly just looks like he got slower as the sessions went on. But P10, again, we're starting inside for the points, ready for the Grand Prix. We've just got to be careful of Kevin Magnussen. We need another good result today. Let's get into it, Canadian Grand Prix. Here we are, folks. We're back for another day of scintillating F1 action. It's race day. McLaren did well during qualifying. They maximized their potential and are in a good position for the race today. Haas met their potential in qualifying and they'll be expected to make a good start to the grid. Let's see if they can make it work for them. And the weather is sunny here today, apart from a few clouds. Let's hope they remain scattered on the horizon. But don't forget, there's always excitement in Montreal, and the odds are that this will be another Grand Prix to remember. Right, well, let's have a look then. Are we going to see anything crazy in the Canadian Grand Prix? 
here today. It looks like it's meant to be nice dry running throughout a lot of the weekend. And there we go. It is going to be dry. Well, it's most likely going to be dry throughout the entirety of the GP there. So far this year, we have struggled a bit on tyre wear. So I'm tempted just to put both drivers actually on quite a conservative one-stop strategy mediums and then over to hards. Of course, Oscar Piastri. Could we gamble it with Oscar Piastri, actually? We know how much he likes to burn his tyres. That was exactly the strategy I wanted to go with. A soft blast towards the end of the GP for the young Australian. That might give him the helping hand he needs later on in the day. We need maximum fuel, though, of course. Canada, there's so many straights around this venue. You want that little bit of extra horsepower in the motor if you can. But let's get into it, though. Canadian Grand Prix. I'm weirdly confident for this one. And we're probably going to cut to both cars out at Turn 1. The drivers there lined up on the grid under mostly sunny skies. And there's Lando Norris. With a top 10 position on the grid, this race could really go either way for them. And it's the other McLaren. They're in the back half of the pack, so they'll need to work hard if they want a podium finish. Will their hard work pay off today? The drivers are ready and raring to go. It's the Canadian Grand Prix. And it's lights out and away we go. Well, there we go, slightly delayed reactions, I think, from Charles Leclerc at the front of the field there, but Ferrari will still hang on, I think, as we head in towards the first corner. No, Perez will try and get between them there as Lando Norris losing places. Zhou Guan Yu as well briefly looked like he dropped down to P13. Yes, he has. So, unfortunately, Oscar Piastri has lost one spot off the start to the Frenchman Esteban Ocon there. Not quite exactly what he would have wanted early on in this GP there. As, yeah, it looks like Norris did momentarily lose the place to Magnussen, but, of course, for all the kerfuffle down at Turn 1, it's no surprise that he was able to make it move back past the Haas car there, of course. We're still in the big rivalry with Haas early on this year, but Alpha Tauri are the ones we are incredibly worried about early in this campaign there is yeah a bit gutted that piastri has lost the spots further behind but we have just got to try and settle in to the race here of course canada with the walls so close to the circuit it is all about just trying to make sure you get up to pace you get confident and you feel good in the car as early as possible there as piastri still under a little bit of pressure from joe guan yu we'll get him just to use a bit of fuel as we head down the back straight in terms of tires then big big actual uh, split stretches between softs and mediums here at the start of this GP. So could we see some two-stop races coming out of a lot more cars than we'd originally anticipated? Of course, worked fantastically for Ocon last weekend. He was way down the order until right towards the end of the GP and was able to recover quite nicely there. As I can see, Mercedes going side by side for just a moment. Hamilton behind George Russell, but he is on softer compounds. Could we see a multi-map 2-1 down at Merck early on? As both our cars have settled in quite nicely, Lando Norris will look to try and pull him away from Kevin Magnussen early in this Grand Prix, as hopefully Piastri will do the same from Zhou Guan Yu. This is where things are going to get a bit spicy then early on. DRS now has been enabled in this Grand Prix. George Russell, definitely a car without DRS. Uh, Oscar Piastri is another one though, but he is starting, I was about to say inch away then from Zhou Guan Yu, but that doesn't look to be happening anytime soon early in this GP. I might just have to get him to deploy the battery for a lap or so. Just try and bring him within the range of Esteban Ocon there. We probably should have done that a lap earlier uh, to being completely honest. But Norris is settling in quite nicely there. I think the cars around him, yeah, are all on mediums. Bottas is the one to really watch out for out of the high midfield runners. Uh, Magnussen, of course, don't really think he should be a massive threat towards our uh, young British driver. But our young Australian on the other hand, under pressure from Zhou Guan Yu, still losing a bit of time to the cars in front of him. Ooh. No, Lando Norris, what's he done? Lando looks to have locked up, then we've got yellow flags out. Has he hit the wall? Doesn't look like he has. I think he might have just hopped over the final chicane. Hopefully, yeah, I'd always get a bit scared when cars go into the wall of champion chicane. Yeah, he's just locked up, missed the chicane there. Wise choice from Lando Norris. He's even kept the DRS off the Alpha Tauri, so keeps him within check. I'll behave. I, the team aren't going to be heartbroken that he's locked up slightly four laps into a 70-lap GP, F1 manager. Oh, oh, one of the Mercs has gone. George Russell's spam down in the first sector there. So Canada, once again, looks like it's going to deliver a chaotic race there. Has he collided with Lewis Hamilton? Don't say the Mercs have come to blows. Looks like he's made it through there. Hamilton just had to avoid him. Very, very odd place to spin by yourself unless he dipped a wheel on the grass on the way in. 
but George Russell, yeah, will probably be quite upset with that one. So that's a free place gain for both of our cars. That brings Lando up to two potential points. Just look at this. Hamilton is really getting hounded by these cars behind him. Ferrari and Red Bull have still got a clear-cut advantage at the front, but Mercedes, yeah, are really under pressure from five different teams behind them. I still believe, though, the best strategy for our cars early on this weekend is just about trying to keep them clean. Don't worry about pushing the rubber or anything like that, as we are still actually getting them both to push. Uh, that was not quite what I had in mind. But, yeah, we just want to try and hang close to the cars in front. You know, we don't want any trouble for ourselves, as Alonso has moved past Hamilton. Still, you know, I'm sure a little bit of rivalry uh, between those two as we head, you know, it's 2022. They haven't been teammates in 15 years, but we know what Formula 1 drivers can be like. As Hamilton looks to be going on the offensive once again, they're up the inside of Fernando Alonso. Then neither of them willing to back out of it. It's soft tyres versus mediums, though, on the Alpine, so surely this should be quite easy for Lewis Hamilton there, as already Lando Norris just dropping back slightly from those cars behind. We have got a lot of spare fuel, so you know what? We'll keep using it. It's again, lap 10 now. We are really flying into the early stages of this GP, but Piastri's now lost the place to Zhou Guan Yu. And I think that was down into the final chicane. But, yeah, I just think Piastri hasn't quite got the pace to match Esteban Ocon a little bit further up the road. But he is on a two-stop strategy, so we can get him to push on a bit more if we need to. But, yeah, Zhou Guan Yu sweeps around the outside. Maybe we can use the Alfa Romeo to our advantage. So oh, Piastri's just losing touch now with even Zhou Guan Yu in this Grand Prix, so he's definitely still quicker than Mick Schumacher, Sonoda, and the other slower cars, as well as George Russell, rather weirdly. We are going to have to be careful of him later on in the day. But yeah, as Lando Norris is just able to match the cars in front looking comfortable, Piastri just kind of get the impression that he's hanging on. And right, there we go, Oscar Piastri then into the pit window. He's still got quite a lot of life left on those tyres, so we will probably extend to at least sort of the mid-lap 20s. Uh, Lando, we probably want to try and keep him out till about lap 30. But, yeah, big battles still going on at the front of the field there. as neither Ferrari car anything to separate them. As actually, speaking of which, here comes Charles Leclerc around the outside of Carlos Sainz. We could really do with, say, these two come together and both Red Bulls get involved. But, yeah, it looks like there's big battles going on down at Ferrari. Of course, Sainz still leading this World Championship like he has done pretty much since the start of the year. Stroll, first car into the pit lane. And Sainz once more will hang on. There is split strategies, though down at Ferrari and at Red Bull, so everyone really trying to cover each other off. Oh, Kevin Magnussen as well. First car to blink out of the midfield runners. We're not going to bring Oscar Piastri in just yet. He's still got a bit more left on those tyres, but just trying to do the maths in my head. We can get him, yeah, 22 laps now. Try and do 32 laps on the hards, and then we'll go 16 laps left on the uh, soft tyres at the end of the GP. Might be a bit of a stretch, but we don't know quite how the hards are going to work. Um, that, that might put us in good stead there, as, yeah, they're still... I mean, this battle, from 5th down to P12, it was P13 when K-Mag was there, but he's come out ahead of those slower cars. Oh, got to say, a uh, yellow flag seems to have gone away again. It's now George Russell has carved his way through. Sebastian Vettel's looped it. So what has the German done under pressure by himself? Oh, it's the same place he did it in 2011. Seb, that corner is haunted for him. Not what he needs early on in this GP, but now we are getting close to when Oscar Piastri can box. I'm just going to try and take these tyres a teeny tiny bit further if we can. Right, I think now is the time, though, with Oscar Piastri to peel the car into the pit lane. Then fresh set of hard tyres are going to get bolted on to our Australian's machine. But, yeah, Magnussen, to be fair, he, I actually got that wrong. He didn't come out in clear air. So it could be quite close there. Maybe Piastri can get the jump. On Kevin Magnussen. It's just look at these cars there. Even Gasly now has moved up to P5 of the GP there. Pardon me. Um, but yeah, Hamilton's still struggling. He just cannot break free from all these other cars there. But a little bit alarming that a lot of the um, soft compound runners are able to go further than Piastri. His tyre saving ability is just non existent. But will he come out ahead then of Kevin Magnussen? Of course, we can get him just to push on on these tyres well there. We'll bring Lando Norris just back down into the even fuel mode. Mick Schumacher's gone by. Here goes Kevin Magnussen down on the outside in towards the first corner. So Piastri, then he might be racing the Haas on the exit. He's going to come out right behind him, but he's going to have fresher tyres there. Magnussen, I think, as well, is on the... Uh, high, yeah, he is on the, uh, the hard tyres, sorry, as well. As here goes George Russell, then, trying to move his way past Yuki Sonoda. Luckily, we're clear of the Williams and all those cars, but... Yeah, it's just a bit of a difficult situation for now, but Piastri will sit in 
and hopefully sit up and get on with it. Oh, here we go. Loads more cars into the pit lane, though. So Lando Norris is up in a P4, then, of this GP. So I'm going to get him on full attack mode this lap. We're going to go full deploy, and we are going to box him in onto the hard compound tyres. Uh, lap 26 actually is a bit early. Can I... I'm going to delay the pit stop by one lap. Um, and we, we might just have to keep trying to do that for a few more. Um, but I want to try and get him to push away from Ocon, if possible, to just absolutely take the rest out of these tyres before it's time to pit. As Piastri update for you, he's still in that little gaggle, but he has come out ahead of Pierre Gasly. So that might have worked out really nicely then. All these other cars might have been a bit congested around each other. And now, if they're all stuck together, Piastri could, of course, box later on and just instantly close up to these cars again. He's back in this fight. So there we go, Lando Norris, bravo, new fastest lap of the day. Like I said, we're going to try and just keep him out a little bit longer as he has pulled away from Esteban Ocon. We're still going to shred those tyres and the ERS, but just, uh, sorry, and the fuel even. Just be a bit careful on the battery, make sure he's not completely ran out. As will Piastri come out ahead of Zhou Guan Yu as well? Yes, he will, Piastri. He's making those hard tyres work wonders early on in the stint. And with Lando going quicker, we could try and break Lando Norris free of those cars. No! No, 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 no. Oscar Piastri span. As soon as I hype him up, Oscar Piastri, I'm okay. I'm not injured. Well, I hope not if you're still driving the car, mate. What has he done there? Just trying to get in with George Russell. Oh, he takes too much curb. Luckily, doesn't hit anything. But that is gutting for our Oscar Piastri there. He's got to bring Lando Norris back down. Another new fastest lap for that time. Uh, goes to Sergio Perez, but now we're going to box the end of this one. Uh, Lando Norris, then we will peel him into the pit lane. So, yeah, good time to box. Fif uh, sorry, 42 laps even on the hard tyres there. He's not, not an insane distance, but certainly is quite far. So here we go then, about to peel into the pit lane. I'll just bring him back down into the standard fuel mode, as will Sergio Perez try and get around the outside there. Looks like Perez really lost touch to those other cars, but four seconds we pulled out over Esteban Ocon, so that's really good Copy to that. see, as Ocon as well p will peel in, so at least then we shouldn't get held up behind the Alpha, uh, sorry, the Alpine car as well then, as Lando Norris gets those Google Chrome sponsored wheels back onto the car. Uh, pit stop is again, like we said, for uh, Esteban Ocon, but are we going to come out ahead of those other cars? Hamilton, he's now finally broke free from all those other drivers, but Lando Norris then heads out of the pit lane. Will he be ahead of Kevin Magnussen? Oh, it's going to be so, so close, but he's done it. Right, attack mode. Attack, attack, attack. Just for a couple of laps, if we can get out of this zone, we have boosted ourselves up into best of the rest territory. This is phenomenal. Lando Norris has really, really proven himself this weekend there. Now comfortably 1.3 seconds clear of Kevin Magnussen. He might have to be quite aggressive. We're going to leave him aggressive on the fuel just to keep time. using it as best as possible. Cool. But this is a golden opportunity for some big points here. I always believe deep down that Canada should hopefully suit our car. But we are less than halfway through still. Oh, look at this. Lando Norris. He's just done a move on Hamilton. Lando is absolutely flying around Montreal at the moment. They're now going quicker than Lewis Hamilton and potentially able to break free. And I've even brought him back down into the normal tyre usage mode. Clean around the outside into the Wall of Champions chicane. What a late-breaking move there from Lando Norris. They go side by side all the way through. Fantastic racing respect by the two Brits. But is that the passing of the torch in British motorsport? Maybe, just maybe there. A fantastic little move by Lando Norris. Oh, someone's binned it. Someone else has gone. Who's gone in this Grand Prix? I think we've got a safety car. Oh, so b someone has had a big off then in this GP. I don't think it's worth bringing uh, Lando back into the pit lane then. I'm going to try and put Oscar Piastri onto a different set of tyres. And we'll, of course, just bring everything down onto Harvest and Saving. But who's actually gone then in this GP? Is Kevin Magnussen out of the Grand Prix? Turn three then. So what's the Haas driver done? He's battling it out with one of the Alpines. Has he locked up on the way in? Yes, he has there. Big, big shunt for Kevin Magnussen. Hits both walls. I hope he's all right. 
Right, well, Oscar Piastri then. We're still going to get him to box once more before the end of this GP. Uh, but he's going to re-emerge in P15, so he's only lost a couple of places. If he can take these tyres again, about another 22 laps or so, then go soft to the end. He should be in good nick, but that's gutting for Lando. He was able to break free of those other cars, and he's going to have to do it all again now with Hamilton on his gearbox. Right, safety car about to come back in then, so we're going to have to try and get everything turned back up. As we'll just bring him into neutral. And of course, when it goes green, we will get Lando Norris on the attack mode once more there. Gonna have to monitor Oscar Piastri's tyre wear, but I think he, I mean, he wasn't really gonna lose out a lot. So I think it was the right call to make. But Lando Norris, P5 and the Canadian Grand Prix. This will be a fantastic little result for him, especially as the safety car hasn't really affected the running order at the moment, but it will be Carlos Sainz leading the way then on the restart. He's got both Red Bulls behind him, Charles Leclerc in P4. Um, yeah, just a reminder there that the pit line very, very late around the Canadian Grand Prix, but it is green flag racing once more then as we head down in towards the final couple of corners. Lando Norris, now we're going to go full out attack mode once more with this McLaren car. I don't really want him to fight the Ferraris, to be completely honest. If they can just break away, that will be good, but take Lando with them. That will be quite nice there as we head our way through the first couple of corners. Piastri as well, we're just going to not worry too much about what he's doing at the moment. You know, I don't want to pull favourites, but when one car's 10 places above the other, sometimes you've got to focus on the one that's going to score the points. But Oscar Piastri, you know, there's still some good potential this afternoon, but we've just got to try and hope that Lando can break away from the Alonso's and the Ocon's again. I'm not too concerned about Lewis. He's probably going to have good pace, but if we can break away from those Alpines, that would be a miracle. There we go, DRS re-enabled as we get into the second half of this GP, and it doesn't look, there's no cars that are outside the DRS range of anyone else at the moment. It's insane how competitive this weekend is looking there, as it might be worth trying to break away from Lewis, but yeah, Alonso there just hanging on to the back of the Merc. Oh, there we go, Alonso, 2.2 now behind uh, the uh, behind Lewis Hamilton, sorry. So we can afford just to bring it back down again on the tyres. May as well keep burning up the fuel. I need to do that with Oscar Piastri. Basically leave him on rip drives to the end. So he might be able to try and pick up some places. But this is just perfect. As Lando Norris is actually in the battle for the lead here in Canada. I'm not going to try and get him to fight those front runners, But if he gets a chance, he's got to take it. Well, I knew it wasn't going to last forever then. Lando Norris now has just it back outside of the range there as Oscar Piastri making moves now past Mick Schumacher. I thought it was going to be Sonoda he gets around first, but clearly up the inside then of the Hass he goes into turn one. Like I said, I don't really want to put no focus on Oscar, but we've definitely got to really be the worried about what Lando Norris is going to do, but a fantastic little one. Hopefully now Sonoda's going to be vulnerable as well. As yet, we, you know, we're still going to cheer him on when he does make those moves. We might be focusing on our other car, but I'm certainly not going to forget about him at this stage of the day, as we'll try and go on the overtake mode then, see if we can try and get a run on Yuki Sonoda. Down the back straight we go. Is it going to be two for the price of one? Yes, it is. Oscar Piastri, a daring little move there to the inside of the Alpha Tauri, but he is through, and now he's got a bit of a gap up to George Russell in front, who's still is unable to get back towards the cars he should be fighting. There's Lando as well. Looks like he's lost the place to Lewis, but just keep up with him, Lando. We want to pull away from those Alpines. The gap's back up to four seconds. I, I'm, again, I'm not worried about the Mercs, the Ferraris, or the Red Bulls here. I'm just worried about beating our rival. I mean, this has been a sensational drive by both of our drivers up to this point there. Piastri still sat just behind George Russell now as he's actually got himself back in the DRS range as Alonso and Ocon duking out and this is just working wonders for Lando Norris I knew he wouldn't have the pace to stick with those top cars Hamilton that safety car has really been a lifeline for him because now the top five are covered by less than two seconds in this GP now 1.7 seconds covering our top five it's given me Monza 1969 vibes I want to say it was when five cars cross the line seven tenths away from each other. But Lando, he's just sitting pretty. We've just got to try and monitor everything towards the end of this GP. Make sure those Alpines don't get too close again. Um, but we are going to box Piastri again soon. And hope that if he can go on a tear on those soft compound tyres towards the end of this GP. That he might just be able to pull off a miracle. 
Right, 15 laps to go then of this GP, and we are going to box Oscar Piastri then once more in this race. Of course, he's got those two fresh sets of the soft compound tyres, so effectively, we're going to be asking him for 15 qualifying laps towards the end of this race. I'm monitoring the gap as well to walk on. It has started to come down once more. Those Alpines just slipstream each other, but Lando still five seconds clear with 15 laps to go, and it's things like this that are absolutely wrecking the Alpine's chances. Let's hope that Piastri get a nice, clean, tidy stop. We really are trying to take inspiration from, uh, I think, obviously, Esteban Ocon last weekend. He made this late, bold call, and it really did work for him. So there is probably going to have to be quite a lot of micromanagement for Oscar Piastri towards the end of this GP, but as long as Lando isn't losing out too much, that's okay. As Oscar Piastri then heads back out of the pits, as long as he's ahead of those Williams and Aston Martins, which he is going to be. He now can push on. How far is he behind uh, P10? About 20 seconds. Uh, less than that, sorry, about 8 to 17 seconds. It's it's going to be a big push. He's got to take a second a lap and get through quite a few cars. Oscar Piastri, fastest lap of the day. What a baller. Come on, we've got to try and get him back into the top 10 now. If he's going to start setting some blistering lap times around here, a 116.1. It's pretty damn phenomenal, if you ask me. But like I said, there is going to be a lot of micromanagement on him towards the end of this GP. We'll flick it up into overtake mode. You can see uh, Norris there. The gap's still five seconds to the cars behind with just over ten laps to go. And are we now going to see Oscar Piastri there pick off Mick Schumacher? He's got no DRS to defend himself, so surely this one can be nice and easy. And that's one car picked off the list immediately for Oscar Piastri there. Now we've just got to try and break free of him and close up. Next is Yuki Sonoda. Here we go. Lap 61, overtake mode again then for Oscar Piastri to the outside of Yuki Tsunoda as we head down in towards the final couple of corners here. Are we going to be able to try and get an avenue down around the outside of the Alpha Tauri? No, he's not. Maybe you can come back at him off of the chicane, though. Of course, there are some good opportunities to make moves around this circuit. Lando Norris, still just want to update on him. 4.8 now, the gap to Pierre Gasly, so it is still coming down. But he is still looking good there as Piastri. Another one ticked off. This is beautiful at the moment. I mean, the gap now is about six seconds to the points. Come on, Oscar. Double points. First points of the year for this young Australian. Let's make it happen. Right, five laps to go then of this GP. What I'm going to do is just get him to harvest for one lap. In fact, no, we should go overtake mode. He's all over the back of one of the Alfa Romeos. It is going to be a balancing act, though through these final ones. We've just got to try and make sure we're using the battery at the correct times here. As Oh, there we go. A run on Valtteri Bottas as we head down in towards the final couple of corners here. To the inside, you'll go. He's going to try and get both alphas. Oh, he thought about it there on Zhou Guan Yu as well. That would have been audacious as I've just realised Lando Norris. We've got to save a bit of fuel on the number one car there. We can afford to lift and coast on the final lap of this GP. As are we going to be able to try and have a look around the outside of Zhou Guan Yu as well? It is all going on here in Canada to the outside of Zhou Guan Yu. Fresh soft tyres against very worn out hards. He's made it stick. Oscar Piastri back into P11 then. Is he already trying to have a go at George Russell as well? We'll just harvest. We'll just tell him for a minute just to hold back as Lando Norris brings the fuel back up to just green neutral. This is shaping up to be, as a team, the race of the year. Right, now I think we can afford to get Oscar Piastri to go for it again then as he heads back down in towards Tom You can see Gasly battling it out with the uh, sorry with the Alpines there. George Russell just waiting in the wings. This is going to be the most difficult car of the three to try and get round. As you can just see the tyre wear starting to affect Oscar Piastri a little bit more. But to the outside of George Russell. Oh, he tried to make it work. He's going to keep the nose there. Will we overtake another Mercedes in this Grand Prix? Go on, Oscar Piastri to the inside of George Russell there in towards the middle sector he's gonna have the outside for the next corner he's only gone and done it four laps to go of this grand prix and oscar piastri is into the points here at circuit gio villeneuve he's all over the back of fernando alonso in an instant we could still get sixth and seventh in this grand prix there if oscar piastri can keep pulling off these worldly moves that he's doing at the moment there will he have a look to the inside of alonso no he will not there i would have loved to have seen a send down into the hairpin, but he'll try and get a run off the corner. Does not quite manage that this time around, as Alonso will absolutely springboard his way off the turn. I think, again, though, we've just got to harvest the battery for one or so more laps. He's tucked up in the slipstream. He doesn't have to worry too much there. As you can see, 
Uh, Ocon and Gasly, the two Frenchmen going side by side into the final chicane, and this has just worked out beautifully for Lando Norris, but it's helping Piastri as well there, as will really be able to get a run on Alonso back down towards turn one, despite the fact he's trying to save, it might be a run on Gasly, as Alonso there, right on the outside of the Alpine, uh, sorry, the Alpha Tauri through turn one, this has been an incredible Canadian Grand Prix there, as Piastri again will try and have a look around the outside as he heads up the hill, will he be able to go late on the brakes, around the outside of Pierre, do the same move as what he did to George Russell, just one lap beforehand here, come on Oscar Piastri, he really has not had the best start to this year but now he's finally starting to come alive there and Remy outside of Pierre will go up into P9 then of this Grand Prix could we get 6th and 7th here in Canada he's gone and done it again he's moved past Esteban Ocon he's up to 8th and I completely missed that one we're all over the back of Fernando Alonso then how did he pull that one off must have been the slipstream out of the final corner there and look at that both cars in the slipstream, but Esteban Ocon tries to defend the inside there, and Oscar Piastri goes, don't care mate, I'll send it round the outside, we're 6th and 8th here in Canada, with just over 2 laps to go, we could still get Fernando Alonso as well, and I'm going to put him on the full deploy here for Oscar Piastri then, are we going to see him move past the second Alpine car, and of course then he's got to try and break free, the tyres are really starting to fade though as well, we have got him pushing a lot there, but down the outside of Fernando Alonso, the two time Formula 1 world champion Oscar Piastri doesn't care. P6 and P7 here in the Canadian Grand Prix. We're going to have to get him just to keep pushing, though. Make sure he breaks away from those Alpine cars there. But luckily, he can act as a bit of a rear gunner as well for Lando Norris as we head into the final two laps of this GP. And look at that. He's immediately broken free there. One second the gap's open up to. We'll leave him pushing pretty much towards the end. But this has just been phenomenal. Here we go, final lap of the Canadian Grand Prix. And you know what, Oscar Piastri, he might get Lando Norris here. This is crazy scenes towards the end of the Canadian Grand Prix. I'm just going to bring him back down on the tyre life. And I so do not know what to do now. Do I give team orders and tell him just to sit back? Or do I let Oscar Piastri have his moment in the sun and potentially jump Lando Norris on the final this lap of this Grand Prix? That quick update for you guys at the front. Charles Leclerc leads the way. Three tenths clear of Carlos Sainz there as they ran through their final lap. But honestly, I'm a bit more interested in what's going to go on with our cars there. I don't know whether to let them both fight. I don't know whether to give Lando Norris a bit more battery usage as well on this final lap. They're both looking fairly tight on the tyres. I'm going to let Lando use the deploy. Of course, he hasn't used it anywhere near as much as Oscar Piastri has. And we're going to leave Oscar on the high fuel burn as well. If these two collide into the final corner of the Canadian Grand Prix. I'm going to go absolutely through the roof. But Charles Leclerc, will he have enough to defend from his teammate Carlos Sainz? It is going to come down to the wire for the race victory here in Canada. It looks like Leclerc might just have enough there. Will Sainz have been told just to hold back? But look at that Piastri. Three tenths behind Lando Norris. Charles Leclerc is going to win the Canadian Grand Prix. But we're going to have to flick away from that and ride on board with Oscar Piastri into the final chicane of the Canadian Grand Prix. Will it be Norris? Will it be Oscar? Either way, as long as they don't come together, this has been a turning point in the My Team career mode. Piastri looks to the inside. Lando Norris will defend it right until the bitter end there. He's going to get the DRS out of the final corner. Norris will hang on. But it's P6 and 7 here in Canada. That is fantastic. Lando Norris can be proud. What a fantastic performance from him. McLaren has shown some serious chops here. A good result for the team from Surrey. Yes, there's definitely cause for celebration here. This team can take anything that's thrown at them and come through even stronger. After the race, they sit in seventh place in the constructor standings. For the next round, we're heading back to the heart of the UK. Get ready for a race to remember in Silverstone, the cradle of Formula One. I'll be honest, after qualifying, I was a little bit gutted. I felt like this should have been a good track for us and it would have suited our car, but race day on Sunday, we have absolutely delivered there. Charles Leclerc takes the win ahead of Carlos Sainz. Both Ferraris swap positions, the same for both Red Bulls behind them there. 
three tenths of a second. Oh no, that's be- between each car there. About a second covering our top four there. One and a half seconds covering the top five. But best of the rest, four places gained for Lando Norris, five places gained for Oscar Piastri. His first points in Formula One. And the fastest lap bonus point to go with it there. 15 points for the team. That is by far and away our best haul of the year so far. Ocon as well. He also struggled on Saturday but made it work and came through on Sunday in clutch there. Russell down five places. Not able to score points for Merck. That means drivers championship wise seven points now covering the top three in the table. Leclerc does get the jump on Max Verstappen with that good result. Norris up two places ahead of Ocon and Kevin Magnussen. Piastri up three ahead of Zhou Guan Yu, Sebastian Vettel, and Yuki Tsunoda. I knew he had the pace in him this year. We were just waiting for the right weekend, and he has absolutely gone and delivered. Constructors-wise, we're up a long, long way ahead of Haas. We're one point now behind Alpha Tari as well, of course. We need P6 by the end of this championship. But you know what? It could still be P4. We can get Alpine. We can get Alfa Romeo. We're going to leave Canada with a lot of confidence. A massive thank you to all of you for the insane and continued support on this series. I am so hyped to get into our home Grand Prix next weekend at Silverstone. Thank you all so much for watching. And we will return very, very soon with more F1 Manager. And I've almost lost my voice. That race has been that insane. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.